Hello, everyone. So my name is Gergely Nemat, and I'm one of the founders of Rising Stack. And today, I'm here to talk about surviving web security. At Rising Stack, we are building a tool called Trace, which helps you to monitor and debug your Node.js applications as well as microservices. And at Trace, we are dealing with a lot of sensitive information, whether they are CPU profiles, memory heap, dance stack traces. So our customers trust us with sensitive information. This is why security is one of our topmost priorities when building Trace. But when we are working on security at Trace, um, it's really hard to figure out what kind of attack vectors we should protect our application against. So when we do that, we usually use attack trees. And this is a methodology I want to show you today. So attack trees are a methodical way of how you can describe security of systems based on varying attacks. First, it was described by Drew Schneier. So what does this definition even mean? So imagine a um, real-life case of opening a physical safe. This tree here shows us how an attacker could open that given safe. So in this case, to open the safe, he either have to pick lock it, learn the combo, or use a bad setup of the, tray, of the safe. To learn the combo, he either have to find it somewhere written, or learn it from the target. And to learn from the target, he either have to blackmail it, bribe him, or eavesdrop on him. So this is how he could get to open the safe. But based on who your attacker might be, this tree can vary a lot. So if your attackers are university students or groups backed by huge corporations, they, are totally different, have, they have totally different tools at their disposal. So what we can do here is to modify your attack tree to reflect that. So the way I modify this attack tree for now is that I marked with P red the possible pass from an attacker's point of view, and this is why it's red. Also, here the blue means that it's impossible for a given attacker. So in this case, the happy pass from an attacker's point of view is to open the safe by learning the combo, by learning it from the target, and by bribing him. Of course, in this case, this means that you should protect yourself against this attack tree, because this is what's possible from an attacker's point of view. But to grab an example for you from our industry uh, and from technology, uh, first I picked denial of service attacks. How you could actually model it using attack trees. So I just picked a really exa um, simple example here. In this case, to make the service not respond to user requests, uh, the attacker could either use a distributed version of denial of service attacks or using eager reg axis. And today, uh, I picked to talk about a little bit more details of, uh, about eager reg axis and what are them. But first, I'd like to explain a little bit how reg axis work so you have a better picture on it. So imagine that you have this really um, simple um, reg axis, which basically tries to match strings, which starts and ends with an A. So this is the tree here, which is drawn uh, with the regex implementation, not just in JavaScript, JavaScript, but most other languages as well. So when you enter an input, the regex engine tries to match the input with this um, finite automaton. So let's take an example on why it's, uh, it can be problematic. So imagine you have a short input, like only four A's and an X at the end. In this case, there are 16 possible paths on this tree. But what happens if you have a lot longer input? So we have like 14 A's here and an X at the end. In this case, there are more than 60,000 possible paths to match against. So some implementations of Java uh, of regex engines can really reach extreme situations uh, where comparing and matching against them can take a lot of time. So these um, regexes actually have a name, which I mentioned first. They are called EVA regexes. So they can be like the following ones, grouping with repetition, or another one is inside the repeated group, there is either a repetition or alteration with overlapping. And why it's extremely problematic when we are using Node.js 
is that we have a single thread. So just take the following example here. So we have the regex that we talked about. Uh, we have a core root handler, which basically just matches this user input against that regex and tries to um, say that hello not interactive. Let's see how it would work or not. So what I'm going to show you on this video, if I can play it. Yeah, so what you see here is that, come on. Ah, it's not playing. Seriously? <laughs> OK. So uh, what you would see here is that first uh, I uh, enter the AAX to the parameter. And in this case, it would just load in a couple of milliseconds. Then on the next step, I would uh, enter the long version, which would take like 16 milliseconds to fulfill the given request. But even if in the meantime, I go back to the first step and try to reload the, the short one, which took like two milliseconds previously, then in that case, that request would have been halted as well because our engine, our JavaScript engine in that case, would work on matching the long version. So even a specially crafted, uh, a single specially crafted input could bring down a whole service because of this. So just as a reminder, if, uh, you should always check whether your regexes have this kind of uh, patterns inside them, because with them, uh, you make sh you, your attackers could expose them and bring down your services without thousands of devices, but only specially crafted input. So uh, the next thing, which, is, which will be a little bit more complex example for attack trees, uh, will be about actually how an attacker could get access to user account. So for that, I have a little bit more complex attack tree. Here, the attacker could get access to a user account by either modifying the credentials in the database, and to do that, he either had to get access to the database or use some kind of social engineering, or to get access to the database, learn the password, either listening on the transport layer or guessing it somehow, or bypass the access control by exposing some kind of insecure dependency. So first, let's pick the guessing here. So the most common guessing attack that you can think of, of course, the brute force attacks. So basically, a brute force attack enumerates all possible candidates for a given password till it finds the good one. Um, the problem with this, with an attacker's point of view, is that it takes a lot of time. Uh, but luckily for you, uh, it's kind of easy to defend against. So you have to make sure that it takes even more time. So this is why it's really easy to just add a rate limiter for your application, for your endpoints. And with that, you can say that how many Login attempts can a given user take, for example. So just a really quick example on how you could use that. This is the node limiter module from NPM. Here, um, we use the email address to limit how many login attempts a user can do. But what's more interesting is timing attacks. Use timing attacks to guess something. So timing attacks are side channel attacks, uh, which expose the underlying physical system's characteristic to get information about given, for example, in this case, cryptographic operations, how much time do they take? So a really um, quick example for that, if you, if you have API keys um, entered by some user or API keys stored somewhere, then you would say that, OK, let's compare them using the equal operation. But this is something you should never, ever do. Let's see why. why. So to fully understand this, we have to uh, first understand how we ate compare strings. So what I'm going to do here is that explain how string comparison works in V8. So the very first iteration, well, first of all, it will compare letters by letters. So the very first operation would be T, in this case, when comparing two strings. They match. The second one will match as well. And so on for the third and fourth one until the fifth operation as well. So we have five iterations to compare strings. The next one is two strings that are not the same. 
So in this case, the first iteration is still OK. We have a match. And the second position, we still have a match. Uh, but on the third one, we don't. So in this case, because of performance uh, optimizations, we actually will stop uh, doing this comparison. And it will say after the first one that it's a mismatch. It makes no sense to actually continue it. So comparing strings that match actually takes more time than comparing strings that are not the same. So uh, this is why you should never use the equal operator to compare API keys, passwords, so on. So to circumvent that problem, you should always use some kind of fixed time comparison uh, to compare API keys, for example. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is use the cryptize module, which can be found in NPM. Uh, and uh, instead of using the equal operator, you should just use cryptize.fixed time comparison, and it should solve your problem. The next thing which I wanted to mention are insecure dependencies. Uh, just to bring up our attack tree. So in this case, insecure dependencies uh, caused bypass access control vulnerability. This is how the attacker could get access to user account. Um, you know, there are more than 300,000 modules on NPM, uh, which is quite a lot. So picking the right from them and which don't have any issue can be quite challenging. But still, uh, it's the consumer's responsibility to know uh, if it has an issue or not. So you are basically what you're requiring into. But luckily for you, uh, there are a couple of great projects uh, that can help you with. So the first one was the security project, which, which we learned yesterday that it will be part of the foundation, which is really great news. Also, you have Sneak uh, as well. Uh, just to give you a better un understanding of why it's really a huge problem. So imagine that, uh, actually it's a fact, that last week the Node UUID module had some problems, uh, which is actually downloaded more than a quarter million times daily, and more than 4,000 modules depend on it. So if the Node UUID module has a security problem, actually more than 4,000 modules have a security problem. So given all these facts and how security is currently not part of our daily workflow, uh, this was the reason why we added uh, Sneak, a security feature to, our, to Trace. So if you're using an APM, if you're using Trace, uh, you can just go to the security page, and we will tell you if you have any known issues in your modules. Uh, which actually brings us to the last thing which I wanted to mention. But one of the most important ones is the human factor when talking about security. So from the attack tree that we saw previously, this is the way where the, modif the credential modification was actually done by some kind of social engineering, so a human error. And uh, what was quite surprising, at least for me it was, that more than 95% of all security incidents involve some kind of human error. So it means that something was forgotten, something was not coded in the way it should be. So a lot of factors contribute to this huge number of issues. So it's safe to say that in our security chain, we are the weakest link. And because of this, I'm saying that uh, security must be part of the agile workflow, what you are working on every day. So um, just to take it a step further, Stories, all stories, should include acceptance criteria for security as well, which can be as easy as the following example. So, for example, if there is a profile page which you want to implement or you have to implement, uh, in this case, for example, given an unauthenticated user, when she tries to view the profile page and she's unauthenticated, then she gets redirected to the login page. Of course, it's a really uh, simply, simple example, but this is how it should look like. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, that most of us code a lot on open source projects as well, but not just open source. Uh, our companies depend on the code that we are shipping. So security is part of our job. Security is part of your job. So if you are shipping a new feature, fixing something, 
you should always think about the security aspects of it as well. So, um, which actually brings us to uh, the end of this presentation. Uh, if you like it and you'd like to learn more, I have a couple of resources for you. Uh, there is the Node.js security checklist, which can be found on our blog. Uh, also, the advisories of NSP and uh, the OWU ASCP top 10 list uh, is a great resource to start with as well. Thank you.